then they have this great um, uh, compassion, but they don't have this kind of like responsibility that that uh, they have the story of a. They always tell the story of the um, uh, merchant's son, beloved merchant's beautiful boy, this merchant couple. Then uh, the boy falls into a pit of filth. Then uh, uh, <coughs> the mother and the, the cousins come along the road and see the boy covered in filth and are uh, tearful and upset and feel very uh, compassionate towards the poor uh, boy who's down in the pit of filth but refused to go down and pull them out. They're scared. Then his father sees him and immediately recognizes the boy covered in filth as his son and jumps down into the pit and saves his son. Then it's like comparison, thus the pit of filth is like samsara. Samsara is many sufferings, lower realm rebirth, uh, higher realm rebirth, pit of suffering. Then um, the boy represents the sentient beings. And then the various people, uh, the people on the sidelines of the pit, the mother and the cousins, they re represent uh, Hinayana view, Parteka Buddha and listeners' vehicles. Then they see people suffering. Then uh, they don't have the ownership uh, to want to take on all sentient beings. They don't, uh, they see, they, they have great compassion, but they uh, do not have uh, the causes for uh, the seven, I didn't want to get into it, but the seven uh, step method for achieving bodhicitta. Then the first three causes, recognizing uh, uh, mothers, everybody has been your mothers, uh, recognizing their kindness, kindness and repaying it. Then it's uh, all based on generating love. And that kind of uh, great love for beings generates this great compassion. Then their causes. And the result is an uh, unbelievable uh, vow, like powerful vow to want to uh, save all beings. Then the Hinayana, the Theravada, they don't have this kind of um, uh, unwavering dedication. Then their path leads to Nirvana, which is wonderful. But it leads to a Nirvana that is an extreme of peace. Then it's like, I'm totally extinguished uh, my mental afflictions. And I can help you extinguish your mental afflictions. Uh, but it's not this vast kind of, I will reach the state of a Buddha, an omniscient being, and then get everybody out of samsara. Then that's a most important uh, uh, reason to study the Lojong teachings, is to get to that mind that takes responsibility for all sentient beings. Then if you can get to that mind, then that mind is the direct cause for bodhicitta, the unbelievable uh, uh, mind of enlightenment, what they say called the mind of enlightenment. So bodhicitta is important in the beginning of the path to get your butt into gear to start uh, doing your practice. You would not even study the Mahayana Buddhism unless you had some kind of compassion towards being through. Uh, it would look like Sanskrit to you or Latin. You wouldn't understand what these people were talking about. Then compassion is important in the middle of your path. Because when you finally start to study the Mahayana Dharma and you realize the unbelievable amount, the limitless uh, amount of beings that need to be saved, 
then the unbelievable length of time that you're going to need to do, need to do this, then it seems very overwhelming that you very much need uh, compassion at that time because you will give up and you will go to the forget about saving everybody. I'm just looking, uh, just looking to get out of samsara myself. And I'm almost there. I, I can totally relate with this mindset. Therefore, uh, compassion is needed in the beginning and in the middle of your dharma path. Most essential. And then Jaitam Kappa says in Lamam Chemo that compassion is needed at the end of the Bodhisattva's path. Then the end of the Bodhisattva's path is when he becomes a Buddha. Rinpoche used to always say, what do you think? Do you think Buddhas retire? Do you think Buddhas get a pension? Like, uh, you know, state workers and go and retire? No. Buddhas, when they achieve this uh, omniscient state, then they help beings. They, they've taken a vow. As long as space remains, as long as the, there are many limitless suffering beings, I will remain. That, that you hear that all the time. Dalai Lama loves that term, uh, loves that saying. So you need compassion at the end of the path, because just because you achieve the state of a Buddha does not mean that you forget the beings and work less for their benefit and liberation. or teachings. Tempe means to reveal, uh, that which reveals. Chir, chir means in order, in order to. Zapape, zapape means uh, the author, the author of this text. Cheba, cheba means great, uh, immeasurable. Tempa, tempa means to show, to teach, to demonstrate. Then that was translated as the greatness of the originator uh, presented in order to demonstrate the authoritative, authoritative source of the Dharma. <coughs> uh, mana Dutsi Ningbo Di Tsurlingba Ne Gyupa Yin. Then uh, Manga means instructions. Uh, Dharma teachings. Dutsi Ningbo means the essence, uh, nectar, the, um, the essence of the nectar, uh, holy nectar, long life nectar, Amrita Sanskrit. Uh, D in this case means this. 